Yep. Hello, everyone. It is um, November the 17th. 17th. Yes. <laughs> And just so you know, we are recording this portion of um, the the Zoom. When we get to show and tell at the towards the end of this, we will turn the recording off so that you can feel free to show your face and not be um, worried that people are going to look at you afterwards. Um, and that just reminds me to just to tell you that we will be doing a uh, show and tell so and this is whatever you're working whether it's my yarn or somebody else's yarn you know part of what we're interested in is what you are knitting in preparation for the holidays and so on um, okay, so I'm Babs Asherman. For those of you who may not know um, me or have seen me at a show, I am Miss Babs. Next to me is Lynn, and Lynn Everett has been with us for a year, but has been working with me off and on for six or seven years closer to 10 now okay well <laughs> you know time flies when you're having fun yeah. and um she's been going to shows with us for a long time and she decided to join us this year and so um so she's my co-host so that when I forget the name of something or she can grab something or I can grab something. So um, I guess we checked in in October. We did not check in in October. We checked in in September the last time. Yes, because October was showtime and we took a we took a month off, off. Of, of because we we're so busy packing up and everything. <laughs> right. And then in September, you were at Fiber Space. So Helen right. and I got to play with uh, all the fall collection and talk about right. it, which is really right. fun. So since then, we've been to DFW in Dallas. We have been to Rhinebeck. New York Sheep and Wool in October. And then the weekend after that, we went to SAF in Asheville slash Fletcher, North Carolina. Uh, it's, it's the busiest time of the year for us. We get ready. We try to get ready. We think we're ready. And then there are things that just aren't quite done. Uh, in and around all of that, we're also in the process of dyeing yarn for festive, which amazingly, since we got back, we've been busy twisting, wrapping, and um, packing, and shipping, and all of our festive sets uh, are gone, are out. We are going to make up a few more of the old master set and put those up. I think there are a few of other sets. Yeah, there are a small handful of ready to ship sets and I'll link those in the chat. And the old masters will appear on this page once we've made them. So um, you're hearing Helen in the background. And Helen is um, right arm. Yes, right, right arm, left, left brain. arm. Yeah. <laughs> brain and right arm, yeah. Um, and so she uh, is exquisite with the computer and showing links and that sort of thing. So we're amazed that we got the sets out. I think the last, last year, we sent the last of the festive sets out the week of Thanksgiving. And so we sent the last of them Wednesday. Yesterday. Right? Yesterday. And 
so we really that it was really timely and we're really um we did just we did 10 different sets some of them they were you know based on different bases and different um like amba also had obsidian with some of hers so there was that um a main color add-on kind of right. variation right yeah, I didn't even count that in the time. Right. right. <laughs> and so the other thing is, is that we have coordinating colors listed on the festive set page. Mm -hmm. And we are in the process of dyeing a few of those that are out of stock. And those should be available either next week or early the week after. Mm -hmm. um, my other right arm, Ivy, who is uh, enjoying vacation. Yeah, vacation. is enjoying vacation. And so she helps in the planning of dying. So when she gets back, we will get really back on target with those. What else have we been doing? We released a collection of hats and so I'm going to show you these. Um, they were in, featured in our newsletter last week, um, which it will include, if you have that, if you have access to that newsletter, it has all the links to all the things we're going to be showing you today. But we thought we'd bring them so you could see them kind of in person, you know, live action. So this is Alterna. And Veronica Parsons designed it in Intrepid. And she used Macrit Lime. And I'm sure that there are many people who would not use Macrit Lime <laughs> to put on their head. I probably wouldn't um, because it doesn't go with my skin all that well. But it is, she used it because it allowed the cables to really show mm -hmm. and that's part of what we wanted you to see um the feel is really great and this is a great uh hat for both um men or women mm -hmm. i think i would yeah the fun of zoom you can look at this you. is the baptisia hat Irina and Akiva designed it and it's knit in Kunlun. Kunlun is one of my absolute favorite yarns for hats in particular, because if you've got uh, really cold wind blowing, I don't know if you live where there's a lot of wind, <laughs> but last night we lost power because of wind. And so uh, this is what I, this is the yarn, the hat that I like to put on when I have to walk the dogs because there are now two dogs. Um, <laughs> and uh, this is a really nice suite and the, the cables go up to the top of the hat is really. She did a great job on the crown. That's kind of how I judge hats is how does the crown work out? And that's a great. So job. this mm -hmm. really looks sweet. Yeah. And of course, these are all one skein projects, except for one of them. Um, two of them. Oh, two. Mm -hmm. Two. Okay. We'll get yes. there. We will get there. This hat is in uh, Caroline, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Roasted Pumpkin Caroline. And by Mackenzie Alvarez. It is also a very sweet hat. Is again a good hat for both men and women. And, you know, it's a beanie style. There's somebody waiting. To... Oh, sorry. So. And it shows the stitches beautifully. Yeah, it really does. So nice that's picture. nice. It could also be knit in two ply or any fingering. Yeah, white. any fingering white yarn. So this I might still. 
<laughs> Not until it retires. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, Susanna I C did this hat for us, and it is called Franz. She is definitely somebody who is uh, inspired by nature, and it you can see the crown here. It's really pretty. Also, very well done. This uses a uh, green-eyed monster Yowza mini. and a Yowza Mini, so it's one skein, and it, I'm sure it uses up almost all of the skein. So yeah, this one's a good slouchy style hat. But you could also stop early and it, it be more of a beanie mm -hmm. style. Yeah. Pretty this is ladder trail designed by our own Helen Cosgrove Daisy Davies. And she again has a nice top there and good cables. This is knit in uh, Killington. So it, how much did you have left? decent amount left. I, I think it used maybe two thirds of this game, something like okay. that. Um, but it's a, it's also a bit slouchy and you could easily cut out one section of the, the repeat. cable repeat um, right. to make it more of a beanie. So nice, nice, nice hat. So one of the things about hats for me is that every year I make one, it's a great way for me to see how a colorway looks. And it's something I do to knit things up. And I also have relatives that have a bunch of relatives that live in Colorado. So they all, you know, need a new hat every year, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, it's like hats go away. They get used up, especially in a place like Colorado where they wear hats on a daily basis through the winter. And so what I do is I box up about 20 hats and I send them off to my sister and she has her kids and grandkids and great grandkids come over and they all pick the one that they like and that fits their head. So I'm able to make different sizes and that sort of thing. It's, I don't know, it's just an easy way to um, connect with them. Okay, this is Little Tendril and it is by Jennifer Weissman. And she did it in a couple of sizes. So there's, this is the detail and here's the detail on the uh, larger size. She put how many sizes in this? I think it's got, four sizes most of the hats have multiple sizes right so there's different um sizes and you can you know this is right for um a smaller kid it's amazing how big kid hat <laughs> heads are isn't it you know it's uh like baby hats <laughs> yeah yeah um, she also added different cast on edges for these with a double. Yeah. So that one's double and this one's um, more of a regular cast on. Right. So this one's single and that one's double. Yeah. Folded over, which is nice. Okay. Then uh, Michael Harrigan did a Fair Isle hat and it is also in Yowza Minis. Yowza Minis. So it used three. My guess is that you could probably uh, get two hat hats out of four skeins. You probably need two of the main color or switch things around. Mm -hmm. um, he did a nice job on this. And it is also something that could be worn by both men and women. So he put a little uh, braid on the top, but you, of course you don't need to have to do that. Um, so. It's a nice touch of whimsy though. Right. Mm -hmm. So just so you can see the inside, he did a, it's 
his color work is spectacular. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty amazing at how well it's done. That's sort of the sign of mine would not look like that. <laughs> Just saying. That's the mark of real knitters that we always look at the insides of things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here is another Jennifer Weissman uh, pattern, and it's called Spruced Up. And it, again, she did multiple sizes, but and the this is a doubled edge on the hat on the adult size and a single edge on this one. This is the detail it used. Um, Karen, is that it? yeah, and the reason she sent the two hats and the two hats is because she got them out of one skein of Intrepid. So the the full size adult hat and the smaller child's hat are both from the same skein. So you could actually get that done. I just realized I didn't say the name of um, Michael Harrigan's hat, and it's Mac, a real <laughs> sort of. Plain old, straight up, masculine name. Okay. Um, another hat by Helen, and it's called Topsy Turvy. And this one does require two skeins of yummy two ply or any fingering. And you can, whoever is going to wear it, can wear it one way or the other, or they can wear it with the salad and the brim or and so this in particular is a great hat for the people who live in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, <laughs> Pennsylvania, Tennessee. yeah, Pennsylvania, <laughs> yeah, Tennessee, <laughs> parts of Tennessee. Uh it's this is a Texas. good warming yeah. hat. It's a very cozy hat. It's when it, it has that nice double layer to block the wind. A bit. Right. The color is Mariposa. The variegated is the uh, speckle is the Mariposa. Mm -hmm. And this is suspense on the inside. Judith says that she was one of my test knitters for Topsy Turvy and she can concur. It is a very warm hat. <laughs> good. Well, that was the goal because we wanted to provide hats that were right for different people in different areas. Mm -hmm. The last hat in our collection is Vatislav by Ruth Nguyen. And um, here's the top of this hat, which I think is really pretty. Yeah, yeah, really beautiful. And uh it is based on um, Prague Castle. Yeah, Prague Castle. So it's architecturally shaped and, you know, has architectural features in terms of um, the design. And she's got multiple sizes, like uh, many of them. And Intrepid is the yarn that we use for this. So it's really very nice. The color is cobalt. cobalt so mm -hmm. oh, that was the hat That's collection. That's a lot of hats. <laughs> but, you know, it's, um, these are quick projects for uh, mm -hmm. getting ready for Christmas. If you need one last something mm -hmm. for somebody, it's a great way to, uh, fill that void. And hats are also a fun way to try a new technique or yarn right. piece. It's a right. small time commitment. So if you decide it's really not your favorite, you're still able to complete the project and, and move on, or you discover a, a new favorite technique. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, kind of like how gnomes are, right? Yeah. Funny that we should mention that. Yes. <laughs> gnomes. Boy, this has been the year of gnomes for us and for many other people. Um, Sh Sarah Shira of Imagined Landscapes has uh, been really doing it up right on the year of gnomes. Mm -hmm. 
And the knit along, which started in September, was that when it or August? Knit along was yeah, I think yeah. that was September. So Helen joined in, and she made the biggest gnome you've ever seen. So this is going to her sister. This is <laughs> this is Vera for Vera Big Gnome, <laughs> and <laughs> and. Um, Vera was quite the hit at SAF. A lot of people were getting, were taking pictures with Vera. And what's really funny is I saw, um, a presentation by Sarah Shearer about a month or so ago, and she had made a really big one and she wasn't putting it down. Like she kept hugging it and she <laughs> wouldn't put it down. And I'm like, I'm feeling kind of the same way right now. <laughs> you sure you're giving this away, Helen? Yep, I promised. I promised Marie as soon as she knew there was going to be an enormous gnome. She said, I want that. <laughs> so he, she waited a year patiently for the pattern to come out. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So this was the International Gnome of Mystery, wasn't it? The, yes. So they had disguises in this. Right. Sarah really has a lot of fun coming up with storylines to go with all the gnome projects and so this right. one was had various options based on that okay I'll let so you go. that used three skeins of k2 k2 yes okay but she is now getting ready for a holiday mystery knit along and it uses a five toe set and can you talk about it more helen Sure. This is going to be her Christmas knit along, or I guess December knit along. Um, we've got her two previous December knit alongs up there. Um, this is her most elaborate project of the year. She sends something every day. Sometimes it'll be a piece of the gnome. Sometimes it'll be a little bonus. Sometimes it's a story because there's a story to go along with the pattern about how mm -hmm. the gnomes have their winter traditions. Sometimes it's one of her favorite winter recipes. Um, so there's a lot that goes into this particular knit along. And we are one of the dyers who got sneak information ahead of time and got to see the gnome so that we could put together sets that we thought would work really well. Um, so we put together sets of five different colors of toes. She specifies that the first color should be your favorite. That's the one that's going to be used the most. And then there should be good contrast between colors two and three. And then color five is going to be the beard and hands and anything else that is, you know, the little extra skinny bits. And then this is just Whatever shows up. Like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we've, we've favorite been putting together contrast, beard, and then other bonus. Other bits. Right. Yeah. We've right. been putting together a lot of different toe sets for that. And I've been keeping our towers busy. Um, Year. Like right mm -hmm. so we've had a lot of fun with this and um this one we think has sold because it has a lot of sort of christmas kind of feel to it and atlantis and then moss and cumin the beard is white peppercorn and then dark andromeda which is a great real red uh, deep red yeah so so there's some ideas, you know, that's something, and I think it's community in December when, you know, it's a way to connect with other people and that sort of thing. And to, you get a little something every day. Yeah. So the one that Helen showed us here, she made last year, this was the holiday known for last year. And um, which was leave no stone unturned was what it was called. And it has a baby gnome that rides in the backpack. We had this one on display at Maryland and this poor little little boy wanted to get it. Aww. He wanted to take him home. He was so attached to it. I think it's, the, it's my favorite of all. Um, this one, which has, Bab showed you the, stay. stay. <laughs> okay. And Bab shows you these awesome little shoes with the curls on the top. Um, they look like skates to me. Yeah, they're supposed to be like little loopy shoes, but I think. Anyway, this was her very first holiday one, I believe, which was her first, what she called it, the adventure um, gnome. And that was the first one of the holiday ones. But she has um, coloring stories and other things that go with it. So each day it's fun. Um, 
So if you sign up on her website for that. Um, the other thing about it is, again, you can learn all kinds of neat techniques. Yeah. For example, the one that you did last year even has a little braid on it, a little Latvian braid yes. around the basket. But she also will say, if you don't want to do the braid, you can do a garter ridge or you can leave it plain. Right. So it's a way to try new techniques. But if that day you're just not up for it, she'll tell you how to skip it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So they're weirdly addictive and super fun. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. And they're great for stash. If you've got odds and ends left over from right. fingering weight projects, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, yeah, a hundred yards for a couple of colors and bits right. and bobs. You can totally pull mm -hmm. leftovers. Right. Cool. So, um, we're going to, what's on the needles. I can talk about what I have on needles. Oh, mine is it's not mine this is secret. My, I've got, okay. So, and mine has just started. <laughs> <laughs> Not much there, but it's the beginning of the Helen Stewart's Oddments Cow, which is part of her um, knit, vent? knit vent. And it uses uh, seven or eight colors. And just so, I'm going to, I spoiler, have the, spoiler. this is a spoiler. I am using the old master set in Avon. Um, what I'm going to, so that's the cow that she knit. Not in your colors. Not in my colors, but that's what I am um, going to be knitting using the old master, some of the colors from the old masters. And so I'm starting with this purpley, dark purpley with a little bit of brown in it. And I'm gonna use um, this and this and this and that's that. You're already using that? And a green. And I'm going to use a gray and a purple. And it's just, it's a fun way to play with color. And I, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do one huge project with my festive set, but um, I love the colors in the uh, old masters. It's all jewel tones and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm doing. And let's see, you can't show yours. That's our secret. You can't show yours. And I've got another one on the needles that is also secret. <laughs> uh, but you'll hear about it in a few week. days. Uh, yeah, a, week. a yeah. week. Yeah. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to just throw out a few other things. I, a quick project that I did. I don't have the knit knitted one because I sent it to uh, uh, a trunk show. A trunk show, thank you. And it the samples are on their way back, but I used Franklin Sojourn. This is a project that would be great for a single skein of Sojourn if you've got one around or, and it's the Sophie scarf and you knit half increasing and then you knit half decreasing. I actually didn't knit all of the, use up all of the yarn, but it's it's a nice way to keep your neck warm. You can knit it long enough so that it goes around twice and then you tie it in a knot. Another color that I would like Ooh. would be this, which is mm -hmm. Bougainvillea, because that's a good color on me. I like that. So I got to wear this Sophie scarf at Rhinebeck. And so whenever we're at Rhinebeck, it's usually the right temperature for some little small cow just to give you that little, while we're setting up and it's always right. chilly. And I put on the Sophie scarf and I tied it around my neck like a flight attendant, looking all pretty with like the double wraps and everything. Right. And I forgot it was there. It was just so soft and so small. Right. And it was perfect. Right. And um, so thank you for knitting that because I enjoyed it. 
<laughs> and it's small enough you can make your own. Like it's, right. it's such a. It took me probably, it's, you know, 150, 180 yards. I mean, that's took me probably two and a half day, you know, in the evening. I just mm -hmm. sort of knit some and knit some. So it went pretty quickly. And it seems like a pattern that's really easy to adjust um, and you could pretty much make right. it a, any skein. Um, it's kind of perfect also for a variegated. Yeah, I think it would be good in variegated. It was also, it, the thing is, is it was designed in a worsted weight, I think, something like that. But I just went down a needle size or two. Um, I probably knitted on a size three needle. And, uh, you know, I'm... I am willing to try uh, patterns. Moving yes, mm -hmm. moving things up and down on needles, just changing the needle size. Another cowl that I like to knit for, um, I mean, this cowl has been around for, I don't know, a long time. Seven years. Really? Yeah, it came out January 2015. Did it really? Oh, oh I've got it upside down. But this is the three color cashmere cow. And, you know, it is um, easy. It is lovely. It's a wonderful present for somebody who needs something really sort of a treat. It could be for yourself, a treat for yourself or a treat for a friend. Mm -hmm. So it really is uh, very sweet. And this is knit in way different colors than the original. The original was done in oyster and pewter and ghoulish. Mm -hmm. So it's a very different, but it's um, a great pattern. The last but not least pattern I'm going to show you here is... Uh, you're yeah, you're, you're a firework, which is Mary Annarella. This used um, Harvest Plenty in Yazamini and Paprika. She also knit it in Harvest Plenty and Wolfsbane. and Wolfsbane. So if Paprika isn't your color, but Wolfsbane, a purple, which is not, not this, um, it would be, you know, it's a great... Uh, little hat and has again a very nice it's uh, almost like a giant like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's so, a firework right <laughs> it looks like that yeah it's that one's great for a combination of any variegated and mono color and I right. think we we helped lots of folks pick them out when we were at Ryan Beck so yeah it was our show color and then we had others so. right mm -hmm. so I think that's about all I have in terms of what we've been coming up with. What is everybody else netting for Christmas? All right, I'm going to turn off the recording. Okay.